Hi, Amit, sir. Yeah, hi, friends. Yeah. So, sir, let's wait for uh, another minute uh, so that a few more people can join in so that uh, they can also benefit. So, in the meantime, uh, let me take a moment to introduce our guest for today. Uh, today, we have uh, um, Mr. Amit Kumar Gupta, a SEBI registered uh, research analyst and a certified uh, CWM. Uh, so, basically, that is Chartered Wealth Manager. He has over uh, 15 plus years of rich market experience. And uh, he is founder of Fintrack. And uh, he, he, he is an avid reader and also loves uh, Scuttlebutt. And uh, as far as his educational background is concerned, he is an engineering graduate from a very reputed uh, institute. Uh, that is NSIT from Delhi University. And he is an MBA in finance and strategy from Queensland University of Tech, Brisbane. And in the past, uh, he had uh, worked with the Adroit Financial Service uh, Private Limited as a PMS manager. And additionally, he has a special love for equity market. And today, today we'll be discussing special situation investing. Uh, with Amit, Gup uh, Amit Gupta, sir. And if you have any questions around this, we can surely take up our uh, your questions after initial round of uh, questions from Amit, sir. So a very warm welcome, Amit, sir. Any opening note from your end? Thank you, Prince. Uh, thank you for uh, inviting me into this session. Uh, so uh, I'll just give a brief uh, background about uh, what we do at uh, FinTrack. Uh, so uh, we are a SEBI registered RA firm and uh, we uh, are uh, essentially providing equity research services uh, in the Indian equity markets to clients. Uh, we follow a scatterbutt based investing approach to recommend stocks uh, across uh, two strategies. One of them we are going to discuss it today, that is the special situation investing. Uh, and another is a much more uh, longer term, uh, longer duration uh, investing as a wealth compounder strategy. So these two strategies uh, we are recommending our, to our clients. Uh, and uh, we uh, uh, we are not really associated with any other intermediary in the financial market. So no brokers, no commissions, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, we do not deal in uh, uh, recommending FNO strategies or leveraged uh, market activities. Uh, so our approach is to find value in the market and uh, uh, invest according to that. Uh, and we, we prefer playing cycles in the markets. We do track, uh, 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 you know, the global macros. We write a lot about uh, our scuttlebutt uh, ground level surveys, which we do. Uh, we share our investment strategies to all, uh, uh, all that is open for all uh, to read our uh, investment strategies every quarter. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, and uh, I, I, we can talk more about the strategies as we go into the session. Great, sir. So, sir, initially would appreciate if you tell us uh, about how, how this investing journey started for you and how had been uh, those last 15 years as far as learning is concerned and how it has evolved uh, for you over a period of time. So, uh, uh, as you said in the opening remark also, I did my computer engineering, but I was not really uh, interested too much into the coding and stuff. So, I think probably I did uh, for about three months at the start of my career. And then uh, I very quickly realized that I was more interested in the business side of the uh, business side of uh, the markets or business side of the any organization. Uh, so, I switched my profile and became a business analyst uh, in Dell. I started my career with Dell. Uh, and then I worked uh, for four years uh, as a business analyst, both here in uh, uh, India and uh, in US. Uh, then I, I did my MBA. Uh, so uh, till the point of uh, my MBA, uh, you know, investing was a sort of a part time uh, kind of a uh, uh, part time kind of a journey journey. Uh, also, you know, uh, because I come from a brokerage family. Uh, so, you know. Uh, my one or two of my uncles have started a brokerage firm and they started this in 93. And uh, so there was always talk about investing and trading and markets. Uh, 
uh, all through that uh, initial uh, phase of my uh, my career uh, then after i did my india i worked for couple, for a couple of years as a consultant as a sort of full time consultant with a franchising uh, company which is the largest franchising company in the world uh, frankop uh, and then uh, in 2011 i decided to move full time into the markets uh, because i realized that uh, you know uh, i was doing decently well uh, uh, you know uh, sort of uh, uh, trading and investing into the markets and i thought i could take this uh, into full time especially because you know uh, of the interest uh, i have developed uh, during the mba and post mba during my consulting uh, period uh, so one uh, one thing which was common was uh, being a business analyst or being a consultant is that you are actually uh, analyzing businesses all the time or you are analyzing sectors all the time analyzing the macros uh, all the time reading about Uh, all the businesses and the headlines and what's going in the market and in the country and at globally at you know levels so i think that first uh, sort of 7 uh, 8 years of experience uh, which was not uh, 100% full time uh, that sort of laid ground uh, to being then full time and then from 2011 end uh, i have uh, i am a full time investor and uh, i have obviously Uh, worked with a brokerage firm for ten years, and then uh, uh, last year we started our journey uh, as an uh, as a research analyst. Uh, and uh, we are currently, uh, you know, uh, also looking to expand into other other verticals. But that would be probably in six months of time. Great, sir. So, so coming to special situation investing. So, 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 would you like to tell our attendees uh, what uh, special situation investing is all about, and uh, what all is covered uh, in Indian context special situation investing? Because there are certain, uh, say, distressed opportunities, or say those are not much relevant in Indian context. So, would like to know more uh, from Indian perspective. So, yeah, over to you, sir. right so i mean uh, yeah i understand uh, where are you coming from that you know uh, distress investing is not so much uh, common here in uh, india it's much more prevalent in the developed markets but you know the basic premise of any special situation is that uh, market participants are irrational so there will be always uh, situations in stock market where stocks are mispriced due to one or maybe more reasons so uh, the reason could be you know the business cycle is out of favor uh, there could be past corporate governance issues uh, maybe there is a too much government interference uh, in the in the sector or in the company uh, payments are not coming properly so in a way there is a contrarian approach in which we are trying to buying the companies at turn around now what makes a special situation uh, interesting is that uh, there are there are certain events also uh, tacked to it so sometimes what happens is these these turnarounds are not happening in the in a company so the when these turnarounds or you know uh, the acceleration in the market the cycle is not happening then the certain si- special situation events happen like you will have a buyback you will have a special situation or special dividend or or you there will be a merger or a demerger amalgamation uh there could be a stake sale uh, to raise more capital there could be a takeover a uh, delisting maybe uh so uh, i think uh, basically uh, there are these are opportunities which is mispriced into the markets under special situation and we are uh, looking to invest into that uh, opportunity to sort of generate an alpha uh, into the into the uh, system right sir so sir if we talk about uh, say a uh, merger kind of special situation right so how how one get to know about uh, the the entities as in like which entity is going to be uh, beneficial as one time event and one can that so how one should uh, exactly go about studying a special situation and when is the right time to get uh, entry and uh, what about the exit in such situations 
Oh, so I mean that's a that's a pretty vast question. I'll try and answer it uh, uh, in like two two or three parts. Uh, so first is uh, you know how you actually select a special situation investing case. Uh, so uh, you know the way to make money is that you just read the exchange filings. I think that is a basic starting point of uh, you know uh, understanding. You keep your eyes and ears open. and you read these exchange filings that nobody really uh, reads and that becomes over a period of time that becomes your advantage so you read them day in and day out and i think a lot of these things may be a very complex at first blush uh, but once you sort of understand the mechanics of them uh, then they they become a little simpler uh, so i think getting through that first hurdle Uh, is is critical. There is a steep learning curve to understand what is a special situation, at least initially. But over a, f- a period of time, it sort becomes a little easier. So, like uh, for example, I had an advantage uh, when I started uh, special situation in- investing almost ten years ago, because one of my uh, childhood friends, he was a lawyer, and he was uh, you know uh, did a lot of these uh, M and A's and spin offs for almost. Uh, uh six seven years of his professional career so uh, you know uh, we used to discuss a lot of uh, special situations uh, where he was sort of uh, doing it professionally and that sort of uh, developed an interest and ear and i you know how to spot these over stock exchanges uh, so when i am looking for a for an opportunity uh, i am sometimes looking for things where the special situation hasn't manifested yet Uh, but it could uh, happen in the future so sometimes it's a bit of a gut feel uh, obviously there is a process to it uh, there is a, a the, what we call it as a fintech fc uh, fintech capital framework uh, where we uh, uh, filter them uh, through the stock exchange filings uh, but uh, sometimes it's a bit of a gut feel but most of the time you need to dig deep to see what is management up to uh, sort of second guess their next step uh in a lot of cases uh, you know they haven't declared that this corporate action is coming up uh, but you can see it sort of coming because you know the stocks are maybe undervalued or maybe the stocks haven't gone uh, anywhere in terms of price for many many years uh and they are not uh, doing anything about it so they maybe they have got uh, cash on the books uh and they are not doing anything about it uh or maybe you know there are just bad management uh, you know they don't want to share the uh, returns with the with the uh, broader shareholders you know the stake with the shareholders so i think uh, you know you can train yourself to sort of start seeing those opportunities uh, and once you start uh, developing that abilities uh, then uh, it becomes a little easier to go through uh, go through these them So I think that was one part of the question. Uh, I forgot the which was the second part of your question. So basically, the question, uh, as you explained, like uh, how to identify and uh, when is the best time to enter and exit? Uh, I mean, from this one time, say a spin-off we are talking about. In such cases, say if we identify and as you talked about, we read the file exactly happening. so after that uh, what should be the strategy as in like entering and exiting how how one should... right right so uh, so see uh, actually you know the biggest uh, issue in uh, doing a successful special situation investing is uh, that you need to be always cautious about uh, the opportunity cost uh what happens is sometimes these uh, kind of uh, uh, events take years to happen uh so for example i'll tell you uh, recently advent international uh, took over suvin suvin pharma uh, now this has been uh, in the news and uh, also s- sort of hinted by the management for almost 4 years now more than actually 4 years since 2018 19 i have been tracking uh, and uh, Uh, they have been indicating it did but it took almost 4 years to you know actually happen uh, and the actual value when the news comes or the special situation happens is almost negligible there was hardly any moment so uh, what happens is uh, sometimes you need to 
plan these uh, these situations or uh, plan these kind of corporate events also with a business cycle that that's why in the in the starting i said that we are looking for a turnaround situation also and on top of that if a special situation is happening then that's like the best combo a turnaround plus a special situation because you know that that special situation is happening because there has there will be a potential turnaround in the fortunes of the company uh, so uh, you know for example in the case of a merger let's say uh, the company would acquire a related or a unrelated party into its own wing and now in the case of merger you need to see uh, you know whether that new company which is getting merged uh, how it fits into the existing company and when you are evaluating that then you need to see how the cash flows will enhance the balance sheet or the pnl whether the cash flows will come straight away or uh, will it take some time to show up maybe two quarters three quarters four quarters uh, what's going to be the free cash flow generation from this how it will how that uh, merger will enhance the profitability and when so when you are answering all these questions related to cash flows free cash flows profitability etc then when you are evaluating the opportunity cost that okay uh, boss we are going to hold, uh, maybe play out this special situation over uh, one year or two years or three years whatever is the uh, your final uh, opportunity cost you are incurring or the holding period you are having so uh, you know that is very important to understand uh, once you are clarify about you know how much is the opportunity cost or how much is the holding period uh, then you can make a position uh, out of it and it's not easy uh, because uh, you know in india the problem is uh, the approvals take a lot of time and sometimes what happen is by the time the approval come uh, the upside is gone or the stock uh, the reverse also happens that the stocks keeps languishing uh, you know uh, languishing because approvals are not coming so it works both ways uh, so like for example uh, in in a in a takeover of uh, embassy uh, uh, which, who is taking over uh, enables real estate the approvals are not coming for more than a year Uh, from NCLT, uh, and now obviously there are technical reasons for it. Uh, there are uh, issues in that merger which is ha- happening. But uh, the people who have bought into the stock, uh, you know, are they are incurring a opportunity cost to it, and maybe even a capital loss uh, for maybe temporary, but uh, uh, they are incurring a capital loss also into it. Uh, so I think uh, when we are evaluating a, a special situation, these two points are very important. uh first is the opportunity cost and second is the uh whether a turnaround is happening in the company whether that sector is on a upswing or not uh because sometimes what happens is even if the special situation happens and the sector is in the doldrums a uh, sector is going through a down cycle then uh, you know it becomes a little difficult to uh, generate substantial uh, returns out of that uh, special situation i hope uh, that answers right amit so we have uh, one speaker with us sam uh, you can hello um, i have one question if somebody completed its uh, mba degree in finance and aspire to become sebi register investor advisor so what kind of advice you would give uh, so uh, uh, so i mean uh, you first need to understand uh, you know uh, there are many licenses which sebi gives out there is a sebi registered research analyst uh, there is a sebi registered investment advisor and both of uh, these are uh, uh, you know have got their own separate criteria uh, and you need to fulfill that criteria and then apply to sebi uh, and if the then sebi approves the application then uh, you know you'll you'll get the license uh, but so the basically criteria- it's a hard procedure or, or anybody can do that after giving an asm examination no 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 that is the misconception uh, a lot of people have on the social media i don't know why because anybody can google and just see the list of the requirements which are there to become a sebi registered ra it does not the exam uh, you need to have a certain net worth uh, you need to obviously apply for it so there is an application fees to it uh, you need to show infrastructure uh, supporting infrastructure depending whether you are applying as an individual or a corporate uh then you need to have a uh, sort of uh, 
uh net worth i have already talked about net, net worth certificate also you need to get from a ca and you need to uh, also submit uh, what kind of a business model you are running under the ra or the ria license so there are almost six seven points uh, which you have to consider and then apply to cb and if they are kind enough uh, you know uh, and if you fulfill all the criteria then they are going to grant the license okay sir thank you thank you and so amit there is one question dishan but i is asking can he explain some examples of special situation where the trade uh, trade has been completed few examples where uh, uh, few examples of special trades which ended profitable and a few examples which went wrong uh, okay <clears throat> so uh, let's take the wrong example first uh let's learn from uh, from our uh, mistakes so i wouldn't say it's a wrong example but uh, it's an example probably where things would not go according to the plan and then you need to show a lot of uh, patience and discipline uh, and then only you'll get the return so for example few years ago uh, we were playing this uh, de merger of uh, green ply and green panel uh so greenply was a listed company and it was getting demerged uh, into one of another company called green panel so green panel had this mdf wala kaam and uh, uh, the ratio was 1 ratio 1 so everything was good i think the demerger happened around 130 rupees original price uh, and after that uh, what happened is uh, so approvals of that took almost one year Uh, after that uh, they got listed green panel got listed 3 months after the ex date and then the covid happened so when the covid happened market tanked stocks also tanked uh, and uh, obviously the real estate cycle also got pushed because everything was shut down uh, then the demand took another 6 months to come back and it was only in a sort of end of 2020 uh, or start of 2021 uh, that the stock actually rallied so this is one example where things can actually go wrong even if the fundamentally things are okay uh, i mean sometimes uh, it's not uh, in the hands of the investor also and in the hands of the company also that covid happened and you know all that lockdown happened and the real estate cycle got pushed uh, but uh, we were invested in that and i think at one point of time we were almost 35 40% down on that investment um, but because the basic investment rational Uh, of uh, companies demerging and sort of value unlocking happening over a uh, medium term uh, we stuck to it uh, we in fact uh, increased the position also into a green panel a little bit uh, and uh, eventually it worked out well uh, but this is uh, i wanted to highlight this because uh, uh, you know things can go uh, wrong in special situation not just because your your basic uh, investment logic is wrong but something sometimes you know things are out of control now uh, that, then it becomes a sort of a personal choice whether you want to exit that and enter again or whether you want to take that pain and maybe increase the allocation a little bit down on the, on the downside so that's a individual call and that's every investor has to take a uh, call so that that is one bad sort of bad example uh, another could be uh, i mean good good example could be uh, what uh, Uh, we played uh, in gmr infra uh, so uh, gmr infra we invested about uh, four years ago uh, when it was about uh, 13 14 rupees uh, and what we realized was that uh, there was a lot of negative perception about gmr infra i think uh, still you know there is a very lot of negative perception uh, and that is because of what happened in the past cycles so now this is a very good example to understand that a turnaround was happening a uh, special situation was also happening but the market was not ready to acknowledge it uh, so what what we realized was that for uh, almost 4 years ago they did a uh, presentation where they said that we want to uh, become a pure play uh, airport operator company uh, in india uh, what that meant was that all their other ancillary business in the power and the infra they wanted to chuck it out which they eventually did Uh, by demerging gmr uh, power and infra uh, subsidiary into a different company which is again listed company uh, but they have sort of chucked it out and they said okay this is now G- gmr airports company and we are going to this will become pure play airport company airport operator company and obviously because they were leveraged 
their balance sheet was leveraged in fact till date it is uh, almost uh, you know 33% leveraged uh, they bought in a strategic investor now initially there were talks with tata also there were talks with other uh, venture capitalist also uh, eventually uh, just before covid uh they bought in group group adp which is a france based operator airport operator and they took a 51% uh, i mean they gave a 49% stake to the, that company and they hold a 51% stake so that was sort of a turnaround and that stock has moved up almost 3x now in uh, four years uh, as a disclosure i mean we still hold the stock not in special situation but uh, sort of a compounder kind of a, a portfolio uh, and we believe you know that that uh that company can do well over the next 5 7 years uh, given the growth potential in the aviation sector and in the uh, in the airport sector where we'll have more airports coming up uh, where we'll have uh, uh, more of these uran schemes getting implemented uh, we can still see a lot of growth uh, in in the in the coming years because uh, remember jmr infra makes money every time a, a customer lands on the airport Uh, they make the money through the fees and they make money through the rental so every time uh, there is a new shop opened at the airport they make money out of it so that's where uh, that is one situation where we had a turnaround and a special situation and uh, we profited it uh, you know in a in a good way out of it so yeah. all right so so amit like the panic Uh, selling uh, uh, thing in the uh, special situations would you like to touch upon that and how it should be viewed so i think uh, my my point is this panic uh, selling has become a off late kind of a uh, phenomena uh, i believe you are talking about a couple of stocks where recently we have seen that they have got demerge and you know there has been a little bit of a panic selling what happens is uh, you know a lot of these uh, uh, lot of this selling has got actually nothing to do with the business uh, these are more like uh, wo fi ki classification has changed so you know they have to sell it so for example if a large cap stocks gets demerged and uh, there is a uh, the remaining entities uh, are one is becomes a mid cap and another becomes a small cap so a large cap company is becoming a mid cap company and a small cap company after demerger now obviously the uh, fi or the fund manager who is holding it in a large cap classification he has to sell it because he has to follow the mandate of the scheme of the mutual fund he is uh, you know invested in or the msci index if it is uh, present then you know the, uh, the msci large cap index fund manager has to follow that mandate so a lot of this selling is got to do with uh, the classification rather than actually the business uh, happening and that's where the opportunity uh, sort of arises if uh, your analysis about the business is correct so these kind of uh, forced selling i would say uh, they become a opportunity obviously in the in the short term it becomes a pain uh, it becomes a pain point uh but uh, you know every panic selling uh, obviously brings about a op- investment opportunity also and i think uh, we are seeing uh, that but uh, given you know how uh, market participants and uh, uh, others have reacted on to these kind of sellings forced sellings uh, i think it makes sense to keep allocations a little low just before the demerger and finally increase it once you know everything settles down in 2 3 months Uh, or three months after you know both the entities are listed so that could be a one learning from it uh, that uh, keep allocation low and then increase it gradually over over a period of time uh, because you know uh, these things sometimes they sometimes take time also uh, to manifest and uh, that's a sort of a learning which we have from these four selling cases so amit as uh, markets are getting more and more efficient so do you think mispricing can can last for a longer period of time be it special situations or otherwise uh, mispricing can last uh, i'm not sure mispricing can last for too long uh, simply because uh, uh, you know there is too much information overload so now i don't think uh, uh, there is anything which is hidden sort of uh, that 
you might be uh, might uh, benefit from uh, getting into a position early uh, and that of sort if you want to be bigger build a big position into a stock uh, then it sort of makes sense to get in a little early and you know sort of build it and not uh, develop a certain fomo uh, towards it so for example i am i am sort of a investor who likes to if he, i want to catch a train i would uh, you know go 15 minutes 20 minutes early and you know get my favorite window seat and sit on it uh, so that's my style of investing some people like to catch it on the last minute by running uh, that and that is perfectly fine but uh, you need to stay true to your uh, investment style and investment objectives and uh, keeping that in mind i believe uh, you know uh, you need to take a call whether when you want to uh, you know invest into a stock so i don't think the mispricing is so much of an issue uh, these days on whatsapp thanks to whatsapp twitter telegram etc uh, you know the opportunity gets exposed uh, very quickly once it one it is out of the market out in the public domain uh, so uh i think opposite thing is more di- becoming more difficult where people don't want to uh you know hold on to a stock for a long period of time uh, so i think that is a, a basic uh behavioral change which we have seen in the last couple of years especially post covid uh that you know for any short term uh, movement uh, or a short term pain uh, people are not really ready to take it for example uh, the green plan green plan green panel example i'm not sure how many people will be able to take that uh, kind of a pain post covid especially with the new people who have come into the markets uh, uh, so you know again we are seeing in couple of demergers which have rec- uh, you know held recently people are really uh, people who are expecting a quick buck uh, but now they are stuck into it and they don't really are uh, looking for a for a opportunity to sort of get out at a break even point uh, so i think it's, it's it works both ways it does not only work in one way right so we have one speaker uh, bala krishna bala krishna you can unmute and ask your question hello hi hello hi hello 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 bala krishna yeah bala krishna do you have any question or uh, you sent it by mistake so so uh, like uh, apart as as far as portfolio is concerned so special situations uh, sir uh, do you think like uh, we have enough of situ- uh, special situations all the time so that we can have a, a dedicated portfolio for the special situations only or it's like uh, as and when they come and we we invest in them um uh, so uh, what uh... uh there are uh, two points to it one is that uh, it's a sort of a style diversification so for example if you have a, a growth or a value kind of a style of investing then this uh, special situation can uh, sort of you can allocate a certain percentage of that put for, of your overall equity allocation to a uh, special situation investing usually 10 to 15% uh, is uh, you know what is suitable for most kind of investors depending on the risk appetite uh so they can uh, you know uh, invest into it uh, we also need to understand that it cannot be a very diversified portfolio you cannot have uh you know 30 40 stocks into a special situation because as you said there are not going to be uh you know so many uh, examples of uh, doing it successfully uh, so example for example there are 5000 stocks maybe you ha- you'll have about 200 stocks where which have, you have a special situation happening uh but you cannot really participate in everything uh, i i see a lot of excitement uh, especially on social media regarding uh, rights issue uh, but you know you are going to participate in a rights issue only if you are positive on the stock uh, and not just uh, you know for uh, for for the sake of it uh, so our our expertise probably lies in identifying uh, sort of mergers demergers amalgamations delisting uh Uh, you know those kind of uh, opportunities um, or for example the recent uh, special situation which we have recommended uh, this week itself uh, where uh, and and i can talk about it a little bit because now, now the x state is gone uh, so we have recommended uh, 
a special situation in music broadcast uh, the leading radio broadcaster in india which runs the radio city fm channel and uh, as you as we know that you know the fm channels post covid uh, they have been in very bad shape uh, because you know people are, have stopped uh, listening to so much to radio fm channels and they have moved more to the digital platforms like amazon music and spotify so the company is under stress uh, and uh, what they are trying to do is they are attempting to raise money from the non institutional shareholders so the company is issuing a uh, a uh, uh, nc rps uh, which we called as a non convertible non cumulative redeemable preference shares you know, i mean uh, basically uh, it's a sort of a bonus share uh it's a, it's by a different name but it's a it's a sort of a bonus share to its uh, retail shareholders and uh, for uh, sort of every 10 shares you are getting a, a nc rps share uh, at a much higher price so now the radio city share is trading at about uh, currently at about 26 and this nc rps share will be listed at around 100 rupees per share so the company is saying that uh, if you hold this for 3 years uh if you buy and hold it this ncrps share for 3 years you will get 120 rupees so that's uh, that's a, a sort of a arbitrage which is happening uh that for uh, 10 shares you are going to get uh for this uh, sorry for uh, 10 shares in radio city you will get one share for uh, ncrps and that will be at 120 rupees so now 25 rupees and 120 rupees there is a clear arbitrage which is happening uh so we are playing that uh Uh, the obviously the bonus share will be listed uh, in about 2 uh, 3 months uh, now the beauty about this is you can sell the stock tomorrow and hold because you have hold the stock on the record date uh, you'll get the preference share in your demat which you you can sell uh, at uh, 80 to 100 rupees later on when it is listed after 2 3 months uh, so that's kind of a special situation very tactical idea very short term with very low capital investment Uh, these kind of ideas uh, which we also uh, recommend to our clients and which we have sort of uh, uh, taken part in it right sir so so be it a special situation investing or say value investing or growth investing so how you think like micro uh, macros play a role uh, in that how much uh, weighted share if i were to ask you give to macros in your style of investing Uh, we do give a lot of uh, weightage to the macros uh, what we believe is that uh, eventually uh, whatever happens uh, to the businesses or uh, whatever happens on the charts uh, eventually is a reflection of what is happening into the global markets and bond yields and how the fi's are investing into it and or not investing into it uh, into india uh, so now for example last year we saw a big outperformance of india as compared to others now uh, china has underperformed but uh, now because of uh, china has removed all the covid restrictions now we are seeing that uh, you know china is sort of uh, outperforming india and in fact uh, here in india we are seeing a sell figure since the year has started because fi is moving money from here to uh, you know us investing in other emerging markets so i think for us macros are more important that drives our investment strategy uh and once we our style is that once we finalize the investment strategy based on whatever is happening across the world and uh, whatever is happening in the macro world uh, then we sort of filter down our stocks and then we look for the best candidates in those uh, sectors uh, where we can find the good stocks to invest into it so for us the uh, macros is quite important All right so so when it comes to uh, stock buybacks how how one should uh, see it or is is it like ki buybacks are always a good strategy or we should uh, see case to case basis no it's a, i think it's a case to case basis uh, what happens is i think i look at that uh, at a buyback as a thing that uh, if i am a positive on a stock and the company is utilizing their cash to buy back then that gives me a added confidence uh, that you know there is there is the company is also comfortable uh, investing into their own uh, own company or into their own stock uh, but i think this is oh, i mean uh, 
uh, this is very case to case basics uh, at some in some cases like for example recently what happened in uh, in, in a paytm where the buyback was announced i perceive it as a negative development uh, because that's not very efficient way of uh, capital allocation into it uh, for example uh, infosys uh, doing a buyback or a tcs doing a buyback that's a positive out of it uh, but again uh, the angle is that because of the new taxation r- uh, rules um how much uh how much uh, is it worth to uh, you know participate into these buybacks uh that is a big question uh, because post tax returns are not great uh, you know you can just do a trade uh, i mean 7 8% trade and not really participate uh, for 3 months into a buyback but if the buyback is at a very high price at a very premium to the current market price then it makes sense so for example a uh, few months ago uh, india mart did a buyback uh, they announced a buyback i think at uh, 6000 rupees uh, when the price was at 4000 rupees uh, so that that becomes a little attractive because you know the price is lying at 4000 rupees you buy it and uh, you uh, sort of uh, uh, apply for buyback and whatever shares are getting accepted that is okay and the rest you are making a trade and you are making a uh 40 50% return out of it also so i think it's a very case to case basis i am not very excited about buybacks happening in general but if it is happening in a company where i am already invested or i want to invest uh, then that becomes a positive trigger uh, for uh, holding on to that investment or even initiating a new investment all right so amit uh, does technical uh, play any role in uh, your investing style or it's all on the basis of fundamentals only so uh, i think uh, i mean we are uh, essentially a uh, uh, fundamental investors but we uh, in our uh, framework and in our model we do take care of uh, uh, not uh, investing into a stock uh, Uh, where the technicals are cl- clearly uh, broken down or clearly getting broken down uh, so there we are, um, for example if a stock uh, we are clearly seeing that some kind of a force selling is happening then we might wait uh, before initiating a position uh, so we are not a jump and buy kind of a investor that okay abhi ye 200 day moving average pe aa gaya so let's buy it okay uh we are more uh, you know especially when we have to recommend it to our hni clients and family offices we have to take care about uh, and this happens more in uh, uh, small cap stocks where liquidity is a bit of a concern then we might take 3 months to build a position uh, you know in a in a small cap uh, so their liquidity becomes a major issue uh, and their technicals can come into the picture because when we see the you know our bottom is forming uh then we start buying it or we do a staggered buying over a 3 to 6 months kind of a period uh where you know when the chart is developing a bottom uh, then we are uh, sort of putting a position into it so we use technicals more for position sizing and position sizing on both sides uh, increasing and decreasing uh and uh, also to sort of whether to buy it in lump sum or do a staggered form of buying those kind of decisions are helped by technicals but our basic investment rational always comes from a fundamental uh, analysis whether it's top down or bottom up so so is it like a mix of uh, top down and bottom up approach or uh, it's like you identify the good sectors uh, and then you bottom fish for uh, companies which are doing well or maybe which can do well over a period of time Uh, yeah so i mean it's up uh, uh, through our investment uh, strategy led by scattered but uh, what we are seeing on the ground uh, we identify the sectors uh, and then we we sort of uh, go down uh, into a bottoms up approach that uh, which sectors are going to be the best sectors uh, you know uh, in that particular uh, which are going to be the best stocks in that sector uh, my apologies uh, so um, my for example uh, uh, as a contrary in view we uh, bought a psu banks uh, from uh, started buying sometime in august 2021 uh, and we you know recommended those psu banks we increased allocation in psu banks all through uh, 2022 uh, and it was only probably by the end of august middle of august that they started rallying uh, 
so obviously in between market crash also happened this russia ukraine war also happened and all that stuff also happened so the things got pushed in the financial cycle we did not anticipated that uh, one it took it will take one year probably we thought three four months uh, but uh, uh, you know our approach was more towards identifying a sector and then going down or uh, doing a bottoms up on 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 a stock uh, picking uh, happening so that that has been always our approach uh, for the past uh, 10 15 years so so if i were to ask like uh, if a sector as a whole is doing good so in that situation is it like basket approach or uh, there also you go for uh, select pockets which you think uh, think uh, are uh, like uh, meeting the criteria on which you evaluate a company no i mean uh, see what happens is uh, when a sector does well uh, everybody does well uh, you know every every stock whether it is a large cap or a small cap uh, does well when psu banks did well uh, maybe at the start uh, only sbi and bob were doing well or maybe even a canra was doing well by by at the end of uh, you know psu bank uh, rally uh, even the bank of maharashtra or uh, you know indian overseas bank were also doubling uh, so i think the you need to pick uh, we like to say stay in the uh, top percentile of the stocks uh based on our fundamental analysis and based on our bottoms up approach so we don't want want to go down the quality of the curve uh, just to enhance the returns uh so uh, for us it's a, it's a even if we have identified the sector uh, we still like to you know stay in the certain uh, top bracket until unless we are playing a turnaround situation or a special situation where where then it becomes a sort of a different uh, approach uh, towards it uh, but otherwise we want to uh, stick with the top top names or what we think are the top names all right fair enough so so coming to diversification and allocation uh, within the portfolio so how how you strategize uh, this uh, as in uh, so, uh, so uh, i think uh, yeah yeah so we have been uh, pretty diversified in the sense that we'll get an exposure of all the sectors where we are bullish uh, but still we don't want to dilute a portfolio uh, with 40 50 names uh, we i mean we are in that sense we are a sort of a concentrated investors so in fact if you go onto our website and see the products uh, we have a sort of uh, put our self imposed limits of stocks under our products so for example in a special situation we have put a cap of 15 stocks maximum uh, that is this is pre de merger so for example if uh, if i have 15 stocks and two stocks go under de merger of 1 to 1 then i'll have 17 but otherwise the limit is 15 original stocks uh, similarly in our wealth compounder strategy we have a cap of uh, 25 uh, stocks uh and that is 25 was also because uh you know s- not all stocks will be in buy at all point of time so for example if today i have about uh, 14 stocks uh, out of that 12 are in buy and uh, two of them are in hold uh so a subscriber coming today will be only able to buy 12 uh, suppose if the markets have rallied a little bit too much uh, then i i might have seven buys and seven holds uh so that gives uh, uh, you know uh, the new subscriber a little less stocks to work with so that's why we have kept the number at 25 that by if uh, you know uh, we are at sort of a middle of the bull cycle then you know any investor would have at least 12 to 15 stocks to invest into the markets so our approach is uh, not to have too uh, too much concentration uh, not like investing into 5 to 10 stocks and not have to, to diversification we have sort of find out our own sweet spot uh, in between that and uh, that helps us to be sufficiently diversified to take advantages of all the bullish themes which we are in and at the same time do appropriate risk management also all right so mayank uh, you can unmute and ask your question yeah is anyone tracking the special situation in federal mogul goits Which company? Federal Mughal Goit. Sir, yeah, there is a special situation. I have been going on for I don't know how, how much. I have been going on for a long time. It is 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 going on
तो आई यूज टू ट्रैक बट अभी तो मतलब बेसिकली यू डिसाइडेड नॉट टू इन्वेस्ट सो स्टॉप ट्रैकिंग बेसिकली अच्छा क्योंकि तीन चार साल पहले भी इसमें हुआ था ना ओपन ऑफर आया था 400 पे देन इट गॉट रिवाइज टू 650 But I think that open offer got rejected, right? No, 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 no. Six fifty. Me company had to accept. अभी भी इसमें यही चल रहा है. अभी two ninety five में आए हुए हैं. और अभी भी शायद इसके अंदर people are fighting. हाँ, so uh, if it came, I mean, uh, correct me if I am wrong. But अगर दोबारा आया तो पहले reject हुआ होगा ना तभी तो दोबारा आया. नहीं, नहीं, नहीं. ये दोबारा इसको take over किया है किसी ने parent company को US से में. Okay. So maybe, maybe uh, because I've stopped tracking, so I'm not aware about the current uh, contours of the details. Okay. So last uh, last February March, Tenico had been acquired by Apollo Fund in USA. So that triggered okay. open offer in the Indian markets. Ah, yeah, but uh, I mean, we also need to understand that just because of uh, open offer arrived, that does not mean we have to participate. मतलब वो कई बार ओपन ऑफर इज देयर बट इट डज नॉट रियली गेट एग्जीक्यूटेड सो इन एनी वेज आई एम नॉट ट्रैकिंग द कंपनी सो आई कैन नॉट गिव यू अ वेरी इम्पार्शल और करेक्ट व्यू चलो एक जस्ट जस्ट हैव अ लुक एट इट बिकॉज इसके अंदर वैल्यूएशन ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ वैल्यूएशन द कंपनी हैज पुट अप अ प्राइस ऑफ 275 Okay. And four years ago, the same valuation the company had given for four hundred, and later it was revised to six fifty. Okay. So All people right. are basically now fighting like four years. My value itna kaise deteriorate ho gaya. Uh, so so I, mean, for, I mean, these kind of things you need to go into the business and understand. You know what what has deteriorated into the business. I mean, maybe company promoters are looking for an exit. I don't know. I mean, these are complex things to understand. These cannot be done like uh, at the whiff of the hand. Okay, okay. Yeah. Thank you, man, for your question. So, so I uh, mean, uh, so coming to uh, risk management. So, what what do you think? Uh, what exactly you follow at uh, so as to uh, from whole portfolio point of view how you manage the risk and what should be an ideal way if you were to tell our attendees ki how they should manage their risk so basically first of all how how you define risk prior to that so i mean uh, just taking to uh, like special situation investing i think there are two major risks uh, one is the liquidity risk uh, you don't want to be uh, into a situation where uh our special situation fails uh, or a corporate action fails uh, no corporate action can fail because of many reasons uh, maybe approvals are not coming maybe the company has withdrawn the offer etc uh you don't want to be stuck because of liquidity uh, i mean the liquidity should be good enough to for you to get an exit of your position uh, so especially because we uh, recommend to family offices and uh, you know uh, a few of the hnis also so we are very conscious about the liquidity factors and where we feel especially in small caps where we feel that uh, the liquidity is very less we try and po- position size at a very uh, at a lower level of our framework so for example uh, my minimum position size in a portfolio is 3% uh, i don't usually buy less than 3% i mean nothing wrong in it uh, but Uh, as a as our framework where we are comfortable we don't buy anything which is less than 3% of the portfolio so if th- we are having a liquidity issue into the small caps which we are buying uh, then i will always place that small cap uh, at a 3% uh, just because of liquidity happening irrespective of you know the uh, business potential or the uh, or the or the you know uh, or the returns for potential which i see at the time of initiation of the project uh, so uh, my sense is one is the liquidity risk and second is that opportunity risk so as i said earlier also there are too many uh, approvals uh, so i think we did not talk about it earlier but uh, one once we need to understand that uh, there is one whenever there is a special situation happens a lot of approvals come there is a very big uh, movement of people there is a public documentation procedure which happens uh, so for example uh, there are uh, benches of nclt 
uh, where which gives approvals to companies and then you have multiple ncls which give approval so for example if a company is located in uh, both uh, delhi and bombay then both the ncls have to give approval uh, there are stock exchanges sebi the respective shareholders the creditors which have to give approvals then there are sector specific approvals uh, so for example a company is in insurance then idi have to give approval uh, if it's a financial entity then rbi has to give approval uh, if it is a amc then amfi have to give an approval so all these approvals take a lot of time and taking time means opportunity cost and you want to minimize that opportunity cost so the call or the risk always is that Uh, you take that opportunity cost uh, you invest one year let's say into getting all those approvals and then for some reason the special situation does not work out so uh, i think those two are uh, my major risk which we try to protect uh, as much as possible uh, try and minimize the opportunity cost and uh, try and uh, have a position size which is equivalent to the liquidity of the company uh, so that whenever we want to take an exit whether it is positive return or negative return uh, the uh, we are not getting stuck uh, and not able to get an exit uh, we should be able to get an exit uh, uh, with a decent liquidity great sir and for at our attendees uh, you are experience a great uh, session today so you can uh, check out handle of our guest today uh, it's also by the name of amit kumar gupta and this handle also by the name of fintrack so if you are liking our conversation you can surely benefit uh, from uh, connecting with the handle so that uh, good knowledge and timely updates are being uh, shared over the handle so so uh, amit uh, coming to the sell strategy right because sell is something which is very difficult and it always uh, comes with regrets because we are uh, i mean not able to sell appropriately right so so how how you strategize your sell is it purely on the basis of uh, technicals only or uh, how have you combined it with fundamentals so uh, i think uh, what happens is uh, you know i mean there is no perfect way of uh, defining a selling strategy i think that happens with a lot of Uh, a lot of investors that the greed and the fear cycle is you know happening uh, all the time uh, how we do it is that uh, if the special situation has worked out uh, then we would definitely reduce the allocation so that is our first uh, you know and that is nothing to do with fundamental that would be that okay that we have invested this in uh, in uh, as a special situation uh, and uh, you know let's take out the money uh, because the situation is over and then we'll see you know uh, how the company is responding how the management is guiding what is the capital allocation whatever they promised uh, pre demerge or pre the special situation event whether that is happening or not uh, so for example gmr we bought it as a special situation at 15 rupees at 45 uh, we have, we have reduced allocation now for us it's a compounder it's not any more a special situation uh, kind of a candidate Uh, so we are holding it but we are holding it with a lower allocation so my, my point is uh, that uh, selling needs to be defined into your investment rational before you actually put a position so you say that uh, okay this investment rational has worked out so i am uh, going to reduce the position uh, and i don't see any further upside so i'll exit the position full but if i still see uh, some sort of a potential then i might hold it with a lower allocation and if, obviously if the uh, investment rational does not work out and the special situation does not work out then i have to take an exit uh, there is no two ways about it uh, so i mean just to give you another example uh, uh, this was uh, uh, the cg power uh, we bought it at about uh, 16 17 rupees we got out at uh, i think we partially sold at around 90 and then fully got out at 140 so which was still uh, you know from our initial price that was almost uh, a 10x uh, 10x but still the stock has you know done well after even after that so uh, so regret is there but the if we look back at it and we see why we have bought it we bought it because muthut was muthut group was you know taking over the company and 
CG power itself was plagued with a lot of corporate governance issues and a lot of capital allocation issues uh, before the takeover happened. Uh, so we bought uh, the reason which we bought was played out. So we got, got out of it. Obviously, the business has done well even after that. And that's an additional return. But uh, I mean, you cannot really time uh, the perfect uh, top uh, of any, any stock. Yeah, great. So Amit, uh, before we close, uh, like uh, one important question, which two, three sectors you think can do well from here uh, going forward in the year 2023? Okay, uh, so I mean, uh, we'll tell. Uh, I mean, I'll tell based on what uh, we uh, we think. Again, uh, I mean, no stock specific uh, recommendations here. Uh, but uh, you know, there are certain trends uh, in the market uh, how uh, how the economy is unfolding. So there are some pockets uh, of the economy and the market which are witnessing a sustainable transformation. I would say now these. Uh, these pockets basically uh, are known to everyone uh, and these are offering sort of once in a uh, five to ten year kind of an opportunity uh, so my my uh, point of view as an investor is that these pocket of growths firstly have been well identified and analyzed uh, and uh, so risks are mostly known uh, what can be the risk and the growth path is also known now the question is, are you able to identify the right stocks into it and able to play that cycle or not? So some of the themes uh, which we are following is uh, one of them is this defense production, uh, defense indigenous make in India production. Uh, so this is happening after I think uh, 2007 only uh, that we have a sort of a big uh, uh, move, uh, big push from the government to make in India and also do exports of the defense equipment. Uh, this is one uh, one thing. Uh, second is uh, uh, the self-reliance in the intermediaries uh, manufacturing, the whole API theme, the whole PLI theme. Uh, so that is one theme which is going to play out. I think one cycle in that is already played out in 2020-21, uh, where you saw all these specialty chemicals and pharma uh, APIs companies played out. I don't think that uh, cycle is completely over. Obviously, it's going through its own uh, phase of price and time correction. Uh, uh, I think that uh, that theme will probably come back sometime by the middle of this year. Uh, and third is uh, the biofuels theme, the whole the green hydrogen, blue hydrogen and the electric vehicle themes. Uh, that is going to be, uh, you know, uh, the theme for the next uh, sort of four or five years. Uh, so I think the, these three themes, which are we are uh, bullish, uh, defense production, biofuels, and uh, self-reliance and in intermediaries, uh, API manufacturing. Uh, but again, uh, you know, it's not going to be very easy uh, picking stocks on this. Uh, not a lot of uh, companies which where people are invested would make money. Uh, as I, you know, always say that multi. Trends does not mean mean you will make multi baggers. Uh, you need to have a little bit of luck and a lot of analysis, which goes into these, uh, you know, companies to buy them and hold them for a, you know, good return over a period of uh, time. So I think, uh, yeah, these three three themes which are, we are positive and we are constructing a portfolio based on these three themes primarily. Uh, one of, I mean, three of three these three themes are sort of. Uh, almost, I would say, 60 to 70 percent of our portfolios, uh, and we are always look out for you know other opportunities if it they come our way.